Hey, welcome back to the Big Ranch Show. Thank you for joining me. The picture you see here is a 13-year-old Adam Toledo. Uh, about a second after, he's dead. Now let's talk about it, shall we? He's 13 years old, clearly not doing what he really should be doing at 2 o'clock in the morning. He's out running with some guy who apparently has a weapon and has fired it. Somehow or another, that weapon apparently ends up in his hands. And he runs away from the police. Now, should you run from the police? No. But he's 13 and he's scared. Knows that he's done something he probably shouldn't have been doing. And plus all the all the different shootings you've heard of people from the police. He runs down this this alleyway, finds an opening in the fence, tosses the gun, turns to the cops who have a strobe on, and then boom, he's dead. As you see from the picture, thirteen year old Adam has his hands up. As well, you can see he has nothing in his hands. This goes back to an argument I've made time and again in these situations. They need to give distance, which would then give time. Time for what, you may ask? Well, to see that he doesn't have a weapon. To see that he's not a threat. If they had taken a second of time, this kid would not be would not be dead. Now I commend them. The police did provide life saving measures. The moment that the, that they realized what happened, the moment they shot him, or the cop shot him, the other officers immediately started providing help. And that much is good, because a lot of times you hear about cops just leaving them there. And letting them just bleed out on the floor for nothing with no help. But this shouldn't have happened. Yes, I agree. He should not have been running from the police. He probably should not have been out at 2.38 in the morning. But you know what? When I was a kid, a friend of mine, we, I mean, we were doing different things. I didn't live in a city. Or at least not a big city. We'd go fishing at 2 in the morning. You know. Weren't carrying guns, of course. But the thing is, people are trying to make like, oh, the kid's at fault because he had the gun. The thing is, he didn't have the gun anymore. You see this footage here. This is from the body cam, right? But there's a, there's a surveillance footage from behind them where you see him kind of bend and drop and toss the weapon over here. And they find the weapon right about halfway down this fence line that you see in the picture. So clearly, he had to take, it, it was clear that he took some, at least a second <coughs> or so to throw this weapon away. Why? Because he probably thought he'd be shot if he turned around with it. Now I have people saying, well, he just shouldn't have turned around. Well, the officers are always yelling at people, you know, turn around, put your hands up. Kids are taught to trust the police. So I'm not going to take any excuses on this one. I believe the officer is 100% at fault here. Because this is a child. And I understand he may have been into something he shouldn't have been into. I get that. But if they hadn't run up there all guns blazing... And they hadn't run up right on him. And maybe taken up some cover somewhere. Or at least attempted to. They may have been able to notice that he had dropped the weapon. 
Somebody on my Facebook feed was like, well, he shouldn't have turned around, right? Well, he turned around with his hands up. At the end of the day, hands up. No weapon. You don't shoot. And is someone going to shoot you with their hands up, even if they had a weapon? Probably not. He had been yet told to drop the weapon. He dropped the weapon. I'm not giving the cop the benefit of the doubt this time. Not doing it. This child is dead. His family is grieving. And this officer is to blame. From things I've read, he was using a strobe. A strobe that disorients people, right? That's the whole point of it. Therefore, this kid, 13 years old, probably already confused, already scared, not sure what the hell to do. And then you have a strobe on him. Making it, creating a disoriented scene for him. As I saw from Bo of the Fifth Column, he was discussing this, how it also affects the ability of the officer if not used properly. Or if you've never been trained to use it. Because it creates a, a you know, like a gap in your brain. Your brain has to fill in what's possibly going on. What the officer did here. His brain filled in that the guy had a gun. And bang. But the thing is, when the kid came around, hands up, because you could see his hands up before he turned, he had his hands up, you should have at least given some time. More than a second. Because you didn't give the kid any time at all. It's like Tamara Rice in Cleveland. Same thing. Didn't give him time. So to the family of Adam Toledo, I'm sorry for your loss. To this officer, I hope you serve time. I know you won't, but you need to. Because this isn't right. This has got to stop. There has to be a different way. And people of mine that are support, friends of mine that are supportive of the police or our police officers tell me that my idea of giving time and space is just not an option. We just can't do it. Then expect people to continue hating you. Because I know most police are good people. And I know most are just trying to do their job and get home. But then you find out this guy likely had a non, you know, it wasn't a, an item given to him by the department that he had never probably used before. Probably disorienting the kid and him at the same time. Anyways, y'all have a great day. I'll see you down the road.